We've got about two weeks left in 2020. A lot of it feels like a blur. It feels like it really didn't happen almost, but it did. It did happen. And I can't think of a year in my lifetime or even in the last several decades where we learned so much about our country and about our leadership and about what we're up against. And so I figured that we should recap the four biggest lessons from this year because the science is settled. These are all undeniably true, so we'll get into what we learned about how our country really functions, about how its leadership really functions, about how its people function, and about how you are affected personally by all of it. And it's going to be a sobering monologue, but we need to get ourselves kind of into shape here for this upcoming year. And I know a lot of other conservatives are having a blast talking about how the Georgia runoff elections are so important, or AOC is selling overpriced merch now, despite claiming to be anti-capitalism, um, hypocrite much? These issues are so unimportant right now. It actually, it boggles the mind how thoroughly self-defeating the American right is. Like our radius of discussion right now, given the current political context, would be the equivalent of William the Conqueror arriving at Hastings in 1066 with however many thousands of troops and cavalry he had, and then King Harold II being like, really? Are, are you gonna conquer me, William the Conqueror? Is that is that what's about to happen? Am I about to be conquered? Wow, okay. I guess it's only cool when you do it. Sir, should we fight back? No, we have principles. And then an arrow embeds itself in your eye socket. That's how he died that day, King Harold II. He got shot in the eye with an arrow during a battle against a French-speaking army. You know what they say about that? They say it was a flesh wound. Get it? Parce que c'est un flesh? Bilingual pun check, John Doyle anti-French origin story revealed check. The point being, we need to quit dicking around and understand exactly what we're up against because it was all revealed to us this year, so we're going to go over that, plus some very important news about this channel, so do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Commie. Before we get into the list, I have a few things that I want to touch on briefly involving this channel. So if you want to hear about the very important news and updates, just continue watching. But if not, you want to skip to the list. I understand it won't hurt my feelings. I'll put a timestamp up right now for you to skip if you'd like to do so. So basically, the plans that we have for the rest of the year are as follows. There will be two more videos after this one, one of which being the giant anti-pornography video that I've been talking about. I've decided to make that the last video of the year so that people can watch it in time for New Year's so they can adjust their New Year's resolutions appropriately. And I also think it makes more sense to kind of end the year with like a huge epic video, one of the most important videos in the history of the channel, as opposed to something more normal, I guess. Um, and in the meantime, we'll be tying up the loose ends for the end of the year here. You know, I'm gonna take a second to chill out. It's my birthday next Tuesday which means that everyone has to be super nice to me. That's how that works. But the most important thing is that we'll be taking a couple weeks off in between the last video and the new year because we are officially going Texas mode. We are moving to Texas. I've been thinking about it for over a year now. I've always sort of thought in the back of my mind, like even dating back to high school, that I'd probably end up in Texas. But uh, this last year in Michigan has really cemented that for me. I love Michigan, love the geography, love the seasons, love the Midwest. I'll be back. Once it really hits the fan, we have to, we have to form the Great Lakes Federation. I'll be back. But for now, it's time to go Texas mode. I really have a soft spot for this setup here, but we're gonna build a better studio. We're gonna really start to do some cool stuff with HOC next year. We're going to be collaborating with more people, bringing on more guests. Uh, we're going to definitely navigate and answer some of the more important and I guess bigger questions for the American right in the future, questions about power, the role of government, information warfare, etc. All things that very few other people are doing or talking about. We're going to be putting a lot more content on the website, including a weekly hour-long podcast with the boys, which will be called appropriately Locker Room Talk. And we're going to continue to grow as a channel, as a community, as a network, uh, and as people. And unfortunately, I have arrived at the conclusion uh, that Michigan is no longer optimally conducive to that, largely because of Gretchen Whitmer. I've spent the last year doing the math and I've concluded this. That being said, with everything that we do here, it's of course all made possible by you guys. And that is something that very few other groups can say. Like we are completely independent. And even when we take a sponsor or something like that, like they're made very aware that we're not just gonna stop talking about what we talk about. And that's why I actually have a lot of respect for companies that are willing to sponsor us because I mean, you know, what we talk about, but also the general political climate in this country that makes being conservative or even being associated with conservatives risky. But anyways, for everyone that's a member over at hackoffcommy.com, you can now log into your account or sign up if you're not already a member. You can get the official HOC Christmas card for 2020. If you want one, just put your information in. I'll send you a Christmas card. I'll sign it just to say thanks for supporting us, to wish you well this Christmas season, all that good stuff. And then also backed by popular demand, the Heck Off Commie Christmas sweaters. Here's the 2020 design. Gotta say, kind of excited about it. So we're giving these away too if you are a high IQ member over at the website you can log in, enter into the lottery. We're only giving away like a dozen of these because they're actually like knitted Christmas sweaters and they're very expensive to make. And so if you're a high IQ member and you want one, just go 
to the website, you know, log in, enter your information. And then if you win, we'll send you an email to confirm and then we'll ship one to you for free on the condition that you send us a picture of you in it once you get it so that we can show everyone how epic it is. But also we can't expect to, to get these to you by Christmas because they actually take a while to make because they're like legit, but they're still cool to wear throughout the winter season. So yeah, anyone who is a member can get a Christmas card if they so choose. And if you want a chance to win a Christmas sweater, you have to be a high IQ member, a genius. And then we're going to give like a dozen of them away. Plus you can access, you know, of course, the list of book recommendations. You can join the private discord, vote on video ideas, ask me all of your questions directly, all sorts of good stuff. So again, thank you guys for supporting the channel. This is how we grow. And this is how we do bigger and cooler and more important things in the upcoming year. So very epic. Thank you. But moving into the list. We got four biggest lessons from 2020. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, first of which being we're not a serious country. Like we're just not. We're not a serious country anymore. There have been countless symptoms of this highlighted throughout the year, whether that's with the nationwide rioting, billions in property damage, all of this being dismissed as acceptable by half the country. Same thing with the government forcing small businesses into the ground while making exceptions for themselves and for their donors. The point basically being that we are not a serious country because we have no will to survive. We have no sense of who we are, no sense of what we're about, what we're supposed to be doing, what our purpose should be. We're divided by culture, class, wealth, race, language, ethnicity, religion. Like there's simply nothing under which we can unify anymore. It just doesn't exist. This is a country that spends its time worrying about forced sexual and racial diversity. It has no greater fear than being accused of racism or an adjacent bigotry. And we're supposed to believe in this like Cold War nostalgia when they assure us that China's trembling right now. China's terrified of us. No, they're not. No, China views us as a territory and people waiting to be conquered. And our leaders are deliberately weakening us and selling us out to them. That's the problem. China isn't the problem. They're trying to run the same play that they did with the USSR, with the Middle East, and now it's China's turn. So they can convince people that the biggest enemy to America is insert country here. But that's not the case. The biggest enemy to America is the people who are in charge of her. Because if it weren't China, it'd be a different country. It'd be Saudi Arabia, India, whatever. Whoever wanted to buy. And that's just it. The problem isn't that there's a demand. The problem is that our leaders are willing to provide the supply. They're willing to sell us out. And so when you look at everything that we've seen, whether it's the rioting, tearing down statues of Thomas Jefferson, the 1619 Project, billions of dollars from private companies to false narratives of social justice, a state-enforced lockdown to prevent what basically turned out to be slightly more aggressive allergies, countless livelihoods destroyed, plans set in motion to escalate societal indoctrination, not to mention everything that happened with our election, which we all know about. Rest assured, given all of that, we are not a serious country anymore because no serious country would ever so clearly be the architect of its own defeat. How can a country so divided fight on behalf of anything? We don't even believe in ourselves anymore. A serious country does not hate itself, nor does it hate its people, its history, its destiny, its culture, its values, etc. This country has become a joke, and we have to swallow that pill. We can't just keep waving American flags and pretending that this is the same country that our parents grew up in, or even that we grew up in. This has become a country not of justice, not of true liberty, not of law and order, not of good. No, corruption, hedonism, tyranny, and lawlessness for everyone except us. It's a disgrace. Better men than you and I have wound up in an anonymous pile of bones fighting for this country, what this country was supposed to be. And if you would rather succumb to the demoralization and distractions of our society, then I think you're contemptible. I really do. I think that giving in when the stakes are this high and when what once was is so great is contemptible. The mission of your life properly understood is to earn the sacrifices of those who came before you. That is what serious countries do. But speaking of corruption, we have our next lesson, which is that the swamp has a check valve. This, broadly speaking, is the lesson of the Trump administration and the Trump re-election, which is that you cannot drain the swamp if, in order to drain the swamp, you need the consent of that swamp. We learned this throughout the election process. We knew that it really wasn't so much about building a case, but really it was going to come down to finding someone with integrity to hear that case. And we learned that for some reason, the establishment doesn't like Donald Trump, the anti-establishment candidate. And even throughout his administration, he was undermined consistently by the swamp, by the administrative state, people who aren't elected, people who are never up for re-election, people who literally exist to soak up tax dollars from us to compensate themselves for making the lives of average Americans more difficult. And we have never had a leader who was willing to push back against that, back against the swamp, against big tech, against big pharma, Wall Street, all of the most powerful institutions in the world that profit at the expense of the American people. And for that reason, he had to go. They launched a complete assault against our president and they had the help of half the country. And so the point of this is to realize that it was never just going to be, oh, well, Donald Trump just drained Washington of corruption. Cool. Now I can go back to watching football. No, this was always going to be something that took many decades to undo the same way that it took many decades to impose itself. And we need to regard what has happened to Donald Trump as a symptom of the sheer magnitude of the power and forces that we are up against. And that it isn't just as simple as winning one presidential election.
and that to seriously return power in this country to good people, we're going to need to be smart, we're going to need to be calculated, and we're going to frankly need to be merciless, especially given that what we're up against isn't just America versus those who wish to destroy her, it's America versus those who wish to destroy her, aided by half of America. And that gets us into the next one, which is the iron law of politics. Democracy is cringe. Anybody who is defending or advocating for democracy after this year is either politically retarded or is acting maliciously. The idea that, oh, if only more people voted, all of these problems would go away. Like you look outside, everyone has decided after listening to the screen people for five minutes that wearing a cloth will prevent the virus. Kneeling will heal race relations. Whatever it is, it's basically proven that you can literally do anything to people. And as long as the mainstream narrative endorses the ends, no one will care. You can destroy their livelihoods. You can beat the crap out of them, literally whatever you want, because we are no longer governed by law and order. We're not governed by justice. We are governed by social justice as defined by the narrative. There is no due process. There is no morality. There is just the mob. And we have to understand that this should not be a surprise to us. I mean, people are fundamentally sheep. The vast majority of people very simply lack agency. And our problem is that the people running our society use propaganda and mass mainstream media as an extension of their own power structures to keep people in line. But because they can vote, well, it's supposedly a free society. They'll brainwash you into what you're supposed to be thinking, but since you ultimately get to pull the lever, it's a just and free society, right? Doesn't really take into account our last election, but still. The point is that right now, half the country believes and champions exactly what every major corporation does, what the UN does, what the federal and state governments do, what the mainstream media do, and they're convinced that, well, they're actually just more educated than you, and they're smarter than you, and they're definitely not susceptible to propaganda, not a chance. It's actually just that they're smarter than you. And speaking of you, my friend, we get into the last one, which is, very bluntly, no one will save you. That is the truth, and if you don't get it by now, then you better get it pretty soon, because no one is coming to save you, and no one is coming to save us. We're the last shot. There is no future generations figuring it out. There is no fail-safe, because you have to understand that the people in charge of things don't need a country. They have enough money and connection to go wherever they want. They're going to be just fine. It's people like us that are going to be screwed over by this, and I implore you not to get depressed about this, but instead to get really pissed off about this. I want you to get angry. Getting sad is for losers. A dog dying is a tragedy but our country being sold out by those who are supposed to be looking out for us is an outrage. And I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to sell you a false hope. There are not many trends right now that suggest that things are going to get better. There just aren't. The society is engineered to breed mental illness, to crush the American spirit, the American dream, the hopes of normal people, to get normal jobs, have families, live normal lives. All of that is made increasingly difficult by the people in charge of our country, and it is breeding mental illness. Because if you have a population that is mentally ill, that is desperate for any sort of meaning in their lives, you can mobilize that population with propaganda to keep any resistance in check. And that's what's happening to us right now. And they want you to join them. Oh yeah, yeah, they want to make America such a degenerate, immoral circus of a country that it's impossible for you to take any pride in it anymore. They want you to just give up, ride the decline, chase short-term gratification in the form of consumerism, sugar, mass media, pornography, drugs, alcohol, any vice of your choosing, and they'll tell you that's what makes America great, that you have the freedom to choose your preferred method of self-destruction. And as a result, we conservatives, let alone Americans, I mean, conservatives are so demoralized and brainwashed, even we don't know what we're fighting for anymore. We want to make America great again, but we're losing the memory and idea of what that even means, and that's by design. Like just last week, MasterCard and Visa cut ties with Pornhub and resultantly Pornhub deletes like the majority of its content. This was literally the greatest dub that the right has taken in the 21st century so far. But even then, we're too brainwashed and confused to recognize that. The utter state that we are in. Literal credit card companies, I repeat, literal credit card companies end up being some of the most based, inadvertently based entities in 2020. And again, this is not to demoralize you. If you want to be demoralized, go watch the news, go watch Instagram, attend a college lecture. I don't know. I don't want you demoralized. I want you to get angry. I want you to come out of this not depressed, not like this doughy mass of flesh, two parts sugar, one part alcohol, one part marijuana, three parts pornography addiction. I want you to come out of this carved out of wood. I want you to be a juggernaut because you cannot expect to return to a strong moral country if you yourself aren't emulating the caliber of man required to cultivate and sustain that country. It's impossible. It's not a coincidence that society deteriorates as men become weaker, including in terms of, of spirit and willpower. And if you think that the average American man would have been in a place to fight in the American Revolution, the Constitutional Convention, even attending that, let alone just grow up and survive in the generation immediately preceding his own, you're misaligned with reality. And that's the problem. Men thought that they could become weak, and now we're surprised to see the society's on fire. This would surprise virtually no one at any point in history, but we're stupid now, and so we think that we can just conquer and evolve past nature, but we can't. And we're suffering the consequences of that, having tried. And if we don't better ourselves, then we can expect 
to basically just stay here. I mean, we can't expect to build a better country. To suggest otherwise is ridiculous. And to suggest that there is a more immediately obvious and practical solution forward is also ridiculous. Hey guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so you get notified when the next time I post a video is, so that if I have another heated gamer moment, epic go off moment at the end of the video, you'll be notified, which is epic. And then you're also gonna wanna share a video, this video with a friend. You could share the other videos with friends too. I don't know how many friends you have. I don't know what your ideal video to friend share ratio is. I'll tell you what, I actually have confidence that you are a rational agent capable of self-governing, so I will leave that to your discretion. But thank you so much for watching. I was going to say Merry Christmas, but it's not Christmas yet. It's actually closer to my birthday than it is Christmas, so go ahead, wish me happy early birthday. No, you're too kind. You're too kind, actually. So yeah, excited for the holiday season. Excited to go Texas mode. I don't know where I put my, my cowboy hat, my Stetson. That's a bummer. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. May God bless America. Big plans. Future's looking bright, boys. Future's looking bright. You're going to get carved out of wood. Just wait. I already know that. I know what's going to happen. My job is to, to lead you there, but I already know what's going to happen. You're going to be carved out of wood. You're going to be a juggernaut. Thank you so much for watching. May God bless America.